Happy Friday, all you minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today as I do an overview of the Green Arrow Omnibus from DC Comics. Please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Now, this Omnibus is one of my most anticipated Omnis of 2020. If there for a while, I thought it was going to be canceled, and I was a little afraid that DC might have canceled this, but here it is. It was one of my most wanted Omnis that I did a video on last year. I even mapped it out, and it's actually more in here than the way I mapped it out. But here it is, Green Arrow, the Long Bow Hunter Saga, Omnibus Volume 1. I'm not really sure why they went with Long Bow Hunters, but really it's Green Arrow by Mike Grill, Omnibus Volume 1. One interesting thing that I'm sure most of you have already noticed is that it has a DC Black Label logo. So... I guess it was because it was suited for mature audiences, at least the Long Bow Hunter saga. Let's look at it under this dust jacket. By the way, here is the dust jacket. I'm not sure how I feel about this spine just being arms and a hand. Uh, one of the things you may not be able to tell from the video is that the dust jacket doesn't really have a glossy finish to it. It's kind of a flat finish. So it doesn't. that's why you're not seeing any re reflections on it really as I'm pointing it towards the light. And here is what it looks like under the dust jacket. It's a pretty big damn book. So big that all of these trade paperbacks are collected in here. So we'll talk about what's collected in here and what the page count is. Let's get it open. But yeah, that's crazy. All of this is in here. Of course, they're using different paper quality for these trades. Let's get this opened. So the year is 1987. This is post-Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, we haven't had a Green Arrow series in a long time. As a matter of fact, Green Arrow was always a second co-star to probably Green Lantern is what most people are familiar with. He wasn't really an A-game kind of character. He was either in the Justice League or, like I said, he was co-starring with Green Lantern uh, going on road trips. But this, this changes everything. This Gives us a new status quo for Oliver Queen, who is Green Arrow. But not just Ollie, also Dinah, Lance, Black Canary. Uh, they move out of Star City and move to Seattle. So there's a wonderful introduction here by Mike Grell, where he talks about how this all happened, how he did not want to go to DC because he was kind of pissed off at them during this time because of the changes that they were making in Warlord. Uh, another one of my most wanted Omnis, but he decided to take it on because he was friends with the editor that went back to DC, and the way that he kicks it off is with this prestige format three-issue miniseries called The Long Bow Hunters, and by prestige, they, were, they weren't like your average comic book. They were more like your annuals. They were big, and the other thing is that it had mature content. There was death in there. There was um, sexual content in there and we are also introduced to the character of Shadow for the first time who plays a big role especially during uh, Mike Grell's run here on Green Arrow and by the way Green Arrow you never hear that name through Mike Grell's issues he wrote 80 issues of Green Arrow and the only time you ever see Green Arrow is on the cover he is referred to as Ollie or Oliver Queen in the comic book he never refers to himself as Green Arrow um, there's little super heroics in here. This is more about like street crimes. And it's interesting because he sold the pitch to the editor-in-chief at DC as an urban hunter. That's the way he wanted to write Oliver Queen. So that's why he took him out of the fictional Star City and moved him over to Seattle, a city that he was familiar with. And there's Shadow right there. Who, like I said, will play a big pivotal role in Ollie's life throughout all these issues. And it's interesting because he took him out of a fictional city, put him here with Dinah, and he's just fighting sex traffickers, uh, drug dealers, uh, gang bangers, white supremacists. There's all these things that happen in these comics that were way ahead of their time that a lot of people are probably doing these days. It's just crazy that this was 1987, 1988. So the three issue miniseries led into his ongoing series and it was Mike Grell. Uh, he teamed up with people like Dan Jurgens, Ed Hannigan, Dennis Cohen, just to name a few others. 
But and then of course Mike Grell himself drew some of the issues. Now, when taking out of that fictional city, Ollie is now dealing with all these street crimes, right? Like I said, he's an urban hunter, which is such a badass way to describe the character. When other characters come in, like other superheroes come to visit him, like uh, Green Lantern, Green Lantern is never shown in costume. He is out of costume and it's just Hal Jordan and he is with Oliver Queen and they're just hanging out. That's how much he wanted to just isolate the character of Ollie and also Dinah because Dinah never really uses her screaming powers that she was using at the time with the Justice League. Now, anytime that Ollie would guest star on Batman or Green Lantern, yes, he was in costume and he would refer to himself as Green Arrow. But as long as he was in this book right here, written by Mike Grell, with this urban tone, he was just known as Oliver Queen. Now, the other thing that Mike Grell did that shocked a lot of people, a lot of fans of the character from the past, is he changed his morality code a little bit. Um, I'm not going to reveal the moment that he does it, but there are some horrific scenes in here where Ollie snaps and he, uh, he kills more than one person. And that's the character that we're dealing with now. And, you know, th th this run... It's, it's interesting because back in the day, you know, it got a lot of eyebrows raised. A lot of people were like, man, this is too much. You know, this is too graphic. It's demeaning women. But literally all the crimes that are in this book, Mike Grell was taking from actual headlines. So all the things that were happening to either kids, women, or even uh, some of the men in the book were actually taken from headlines. And he, that's what something that he never understood. I love this issue. Um... But that's something he never understood. It's like, why would people get upset if this is what was really happening? Now, um, to me, this is the epitome of a Green Arrow run. There are other Green Arrow runs that I have enjoyed. I, I was a big fan of Judd Winnick's run, of course. Uh, Brad Meltzer had a good run. Chuck Dixon's run was really good, but it really wasn't Oliver Queen. Um, but to me, and, and Jeff Lemire, you know, actually Jeff Lemire was uh, pretty solid. But to me, this is the quintessential story for Oliver Queen. Now, I think I've said enough about the book. Let's talk about, uh, actually, let's look at the extras here in the back. So I flip back here. This book has 1,536 pages. It is huge. So there's an afterword by the editor that brought Mike Grell to, back to DC, and that is Mike Gold. I love these forwards and afterwards. Here's some house ads and some... Oh, okay, this is the data from the Who's Who book, which DC is publishing next year. So you get to find out more about Green Arrow. You get to find out more about Black Canary. Uh, why there's two Black Canaries, I'm pretty sure most of you all know, but I'm not going to reveal that. I forgot about this guy, James Cameron, or Jim Cameron. He was a detective that was kind of tired of Ollie taking the law into his own hands. So he plays one of his supporting cast members and here's original sketches promotional posters and of course the bio for all the people that worked on this book black book and pages let's look at this binding to see how well it holds up 1536 pages when i see a book that big i get a little bit worried uh, so here is what the eye looks like so it is all sewn binding you can see the page bunches right here on the video not that big of an eye, but I only opened it properly once. But I have to say, for the most part, and I can't flip too much here through the end, um, it holds pretty well. It opens up really well. Uh, just, you know, towards probably the last 80 or so pages that the book tries to close on you. Uh, now, that could be due to the glue or just the page count, really. It's going to be interesting to look at the Marvel war of the realms omnibus which has 1500 plus pages there's that beautiful artwork from longbow hunters but let's look at the early so the same thing towards the front about 80 pages or so in that it tries to close in on you a little bit kind of like the scott snyder batman omnibus volume one which is not a big deal to some people but i realize it is a deal breaker for some as far as the paper quality uh it is 
actually just a little bit thinner than what I'm used to than, for example, the uh, Lucifer Omnibus that I did an overview of. I don't know if you all have that. Definitely a little bit thinner than the Scott Snyder um, Greg Capullo Omnibus. Um, that's probably, uh, I, I get it, that's to keep the weight down, of course, you know, keep the cost down. And it makes it better to open it up when you got a big book like this. So uh, I'm okay with that. It's not that big of a deal, but I know some, some of these things are deal breakers for people. So I did want to mention that. Now you can purchase this omnibus or these trade paperbacks from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the contents of the book, the build of the book, and of course the page count. Let me know in those comments down below if you've been looking forward to this as much as I have. If you've never read any Green Arrow or what your favorite Green Arrow run has been. I would love to know all those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and Patreon. Those are great ways to support the channel if you can do so. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you for watching. And remember, everybody, please stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.